Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to continue my discussion from last week on how to read assembly language. Now, I have been focusing specifically on 64-bit Intel-compatible assembly, but these concepts should apply to most other things. And so here is where we left off from last week. We had our int main returning the value 5, and we are looking at 5 being moved into EAX and returning from main. I'm going to put this back on an optimization level of 0 so that we can then again do another progression to watch what the compiler does. So now we're going to add our argc and our argv, although I'm not going to give argv a name. So we have our two arguments being passed in. And now we can see that the compiler is doing some things to manage the values that were passed to main. So push rbp and move rbp rsp, those were there before we added our parameters. And now we've got our parameters. And so we're looking at Intel assembly language. So we are moving the value edi into some position on the stack, and we're moving the value from RSI into some position on the stack. And these are relative offsets, so it's RBP minus 16, so it's 16 bytes into the stack. And there's a lot of rules on how different argument types are handled, whether they're string data or if they're integers or floating points or whatever, and I don't know all those rules. So we want to make this slightly more complicated now. We want to say, we want 5 plus 3 times argc. So there's a couple of interesting things happening. First, let's do this 5 plus 3. I'd like to point out that even though we have O0, the compiler has still added these constants together, and it's not doing it at runtime at all even with optimizations completely disabled. Let's go back to our 3 times argc, though. We can see edi has been moved into this location on the stack, and then this location has now been moved into edx. So edx is our 32-bit value, which is argc. argc is moved into eax, so eax now contains argc. Then we add eax to itself, so now we've doubled it. Now we add edx again. Now we've tripled it. That's our times 3. And then we're adding 5. Makes sense. But that seems like way more work than it needs to be, so let's start turning on optimizations. So all we have to do is look at 01. And now all of our stack management has gone away again, and we're left with this weird thing called LEA. And that was the point that I wanted to make in this particular video, is this LEA instruction. It says to the CPU, I want you to do the math as if you were doing an indexed memory location, but not actually index anywhere in memory, just store the result value somewhere. So we can hear, it's, it's amazing to me how complex indexed memories locations can be in Intel instructions. So it's actually able to say in one CPU instruction that it wants to multiply RDI times 2, and we know from looking at the last bit of code before we turned on optimizations that RDI is going to have this value of argc. We want to multiply that times 2, we want to add in 5, and we want to add RDI in again, and then return. So if we turn on our binary output, as we did in the last episode, we can see that this is, it's a surprisingly small instruction, it's only 4 bytes to tell the CPU to do all of this math. And you can get even, if you start to get outside of the range of things where it can do the multiplication of one instruction, it will just keep doing these optimizations. And the compiler is astoundingly good at tracing through how the data is being used and performing the optimizations where it can. 
So there's no explicit multiplies or adds or anything in here. It's just all done with what the CPU is able to do with index memory location math. So to me, this was one of the most surprising things that I learned when I was looking at the output for on Compiler Explorer. I'm like, where's this LEA coming from? So that's what it's doing. And we're not going to see any improvement even going up to 03 here. So that's something else just to be aware of when you are reading assembly language output from your compiler. And it's probably the thing that would surprise you the most. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.